Yo, hey everybody, in this video we're going to create a working game of rock, paper, scissors in the C programming language. It's pretty straightforward. Pick rock, paper, scissors, and the computer is going to pick a random choice. Then we'll determine who wins. That's pretty much it. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started everybody. For this project, we'll be generating some random numbers. You'll need to include the following two header files, standardlibrary.h and time.h. Let's declare our function prototypes. This project requires three functions. The first is to get the computer's choice. This will return an integer, a number one through three. One is for rock, two is for paper, three is for scissors. The name of this function will be get computer choice. Then a function to get the user's choice. Int get user choice. We'll also return a number one through three and a function with no return type, the return type will be void, this function will be named check winner. There's two parameters, an int of user choice, and an int of computer choice. We have our function prototypes. Let's copy them and paste them after the main function. Add a set of curly braces to each, and we'll fill them in later. With these functions that return something, we'll just return zero for now, just so that everything runs fine. But when we're done, these functions are going to return a number one through three. We'll fill these in momentarily. Going back to our main function, we'll be working with random numbers. We need to set a seed to generate some pseudo random numbers. If we don't, when we call the random function, we'll be given the same number each time. We're going to call the srand function, then use the current time as a seed by calling the time function, passing in null, meaning no value. This function will give you the current time in seconds and we'll use it as a seed to generate pseudo random numbers. Then we'll need a title for this game. We'll print something like this. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, that's good enough then a new line. We need two variables, an int of user choice and an int of computer choice. We're going to be assigning these right away, but instead of setting them to zero, we're going to call these functions. For the user's choice, we'll call get user choice. This will return a number between one and three the user will pick what number that is and assign it to this variable. Now with the computer's choice variable, this is where we'll generate a random number between one and three and return it. User choice equals get user choice. Computer choice equals get computer choice. Now we'll fill in the get computer choice function. Here we'll generate a random number between one and three. We can return, call the rand function, this will generate a pseudo random number, but I want a number one through three. We'll use the modulus operator three. This would give us a pseudo random number between zero and two. We'll add an offset of one by enclosing this formula with a set of parentheses, then adding plus one. This formula will give you a random number between one and three. One is for rock, two is for paper, three is for scissors. And then let's output it to test it. I'm just going to print using printf. I'll display an integer. New line. We will display our computer choice variable, just to be sure that it's working fine before continuing. We should get a random number between one and three. Again, one is for rock, two is for paper, three is for scissors. Now we have to get the user's choice. We're done with this get computer choice function, we can collapse it. Since we're done with it, we don't need it anymore. With the get user choice function, I will create a local variable just for convenience. I will set this to be int choice equals zero. A user is going to type in a number one through three. We'll continue to prompt them with the while loop, a do while loop more specifically. Do this while our choice is less than one, or our choice is greater than three. 
In order to escape this loop, a user has to type in a number that's between 1 and 3. If they're outside of this range, we continue the loop and keep on reprompting them. We'll print the following prompt. Choose an option. One is for rock, new line, and I will just copy this printf statement, paste it. The second option will be for paper. The third option is for scissors. Scissors. Then, We'll ask the user to enter your choice, colon space, then scanf to get some user input. We're accepting an integer, percent %d for an integer. At the address of choice, we'll store this value. At the end, we're going to return our variable of choice. And it should be a number between one and three. Let's be sure that it's working. I'm just going to output our player's choice. Then I will output user choice. These should be numbers one through three. Rock, paper, scissors, choose an option. I'll pick something outside of this range. Negative one, choose an option, one through three, four. Nope, I have to pick a number one through three. I'll pick one. We picked one, the computer generated three. So it looks like everything's working. Instead of outputting numbers, we're going to output either rock, paper, or scissors based on the numbers using switches. That's the next step. We're done with this function, we can collapse it. Rather than printing these numbers directly, we're going to use some switches. We'll start with a switch to examine the user's choice. We'll create a switch. We're examining our user choice. We'll examine this value against any matching cases. If our user's choice equals a case of one, if that's a match, then we will print the following message. You chose rock, new line, then break to break out of the switch. If our user's choice matches a case of two, we'll print you chose paper, then case three is for scissors. Case three, you chose scissors. Then break. Let's copy the switch. We have to do the same thing for the computer. Replace user choice with computer choice. Replace the word you in these sentences with computer. Let's be sure that it's working. Choose an option, I'll pick rock, I'll type in one. You chose rock, the computer chose scissors. I'll pick paper, I'll type in two. You chose paper, the computer chose rock. Then scissors, three. You chose scissors, the computer chose rock. All right, then we just have to determine a winner. After our second switch where we examine the computer's choice, We'll call our function to check winner, but there's two parameters, two arguments we have to pass in, the user's choice and the computer's choice. Then we have to fill in this function. Let's start with an if statement. The if statement's going to be easy. If our user's choice is equal to our computer's choice, then it's a tie if we pick the same thing. It's a tie. Now here are the different win conditions for us. We'll start with a few else if statements, but we'll condense it later. Else if our user's choice is equal to one, we'll use the and logical operator the computer's choice is equal to three. That means we pick rock and they pick scissors, we win. Then we'll print using printf, you win. 
we'll copy this else if statement. Else if our choice is two and the computer's choice is one, we also win. Two means we pick paper. One for the computer means that they pick rock. Then we win. Else if the user's choice is three for scissors and they pick two for paper, we win. If none of the above conditions are true, that means we lost. Then we'll print, you lose. Now we do have a lot of else if statements, we can condense it, although it makes it a little more difficult to read. But if you would like to condense this code, here's how. Let's enclose the first with a set of parentheses. You could use the or logical operator, copy the next two conditions in the next else if statement, paste them, and close them with a set of parentheses. Then do the same thing with the third set. Add the or logical operator, paste your two conditions, and close them within a set of parentheses. Then we no longer need these extra else if statements. This code is more concise, but it might be a little less readable, especially for a beginner. But that's another option for you if you'd prefer to write it this way. And that should be everything with our rock, paper, scissors game. Let's run it. Rock, paper, scissors, choose an option. I'll pick rock. You chose rock. The computer chose paper. You lose. I'll pick paper. You chose paper. Computer chose rock. You win. Hopefully I get a tie. I'll choose scissors. The computer chose scissors. It's a tie. All right, everybody. And that is a rock, paper, scissors game that you can write in C.